The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. The Lord said, Woe to you Pharisees! You pay tithes on mint and of the rue and of every garden herb, but you pay no attention to judgment and to love for God. These you should have done without overlooking the others. Woe to you, Pharisees! You love the seats of honor in synagogues and the greetings in marketplaces. Woe to you! You are like unseen graves over which people unknowingly walk. Then one of the scholars of the law said to him in reply, Teacher, by saying this, you are insulting us too. And he said, Woe to you, scholars of the law! You impose on people burdens hard to carry, but you yourself do not lift one finger to touch them. The Gospel of the Lord. The response from the psalm is, very um, foreboding. Lord, you give back to everyone according to his works. That should make us a little bit nervous in a good way to turn more radically to Christ because a statement like that is not so much a threat but as an invitation to mercy. Yesterday, St. Paul sets us up for today's reading because yesterday he was explaining the godlessness of the state of affairs at his time, not unlike what we t see today. He's reviewing the chaos that ensues in family and society when people sever their relationship with God, it disrupts everything. We're made in his image. And so we are designed to operate as he does. And when we don't, it disrupts things. St. Paul becomes very descriptive in yesterday's reading. There's evil, wickedness, covetousness, malice, envy, murder, strife, gossip, slander. It sounds like a page of Facebook or the news. Jesus picks up here in the gospel, woe to you Pharisees, you hypocrites. The Pharisees are not only the religious leaders of the time, but they are also the political leaders at the time because the two institutions go together in a theocracy, which you see in the Jewish faith. And so, they're hypocrites, Jesus says. You are like unseen graves over which people are walking. The Pharisaic leaders who boast of their religious practices and call for gun control and claim that all lives matter, yet extol the crime of abortion and murder on young children and demand tax dollars to pay for it. Yesterday, somebody sent me a, a video, a YouTube video, of a young man, Down syndrome. And as you may or may not know, uh, Down syndrome is listed as a reason for aborting a baby. 
And so I was thinking about, does anybody remember the show, the TV show, Life Goes On? It, the star of the show was a Down syndrome man. And he was very delightful, and I actually had the chance to meet him personally. When I was assigned in Lancaster, he was related to a family in the parish, and he was present as sponsor for all their confirmation, all the confirmations of that family. He's a very fine young man, very intelligent. But with Down syndrome, people cast a stigma, as abortionists do. Anyways, there was um, a film, a YouTube film, of a man who was basically saying on tape, I'm a man, I'm not a birth defect. I'm not a syndrome, and I don't need to be cured. And yet people make choices to exterminate him. As depraved as we seem to be, St. Paul reminds us in today's reading, as opposed to yesterday's, that God's kindness leads us to repentance. In the midst of our squalor, he says, I'd like you to come home. I'd like you to come back to me. St. Paul uses a word called forbearance. This is a great word of hope because it connotates that those who are in sin because of weakness, that is, a weakness may be a compulsion, it may be a trauma that causes us to sin, could be a number of things, but it's a, it's a sin of weakness, not, so, not as much intent. A sin of weakness, and it gives he gives great grace for someone to keep striving and turn back to him in repentance. These kind of sins that, that God gives us forbearance to is, it could be something like alcoholism. There's a type of addiction and the person keeps trying and trying and trying. They fail, but they keep going back. What's leading them is the grace of Christ. And there's something to be said about that. But St. Paul also talks about God's patience. Patience has a connotation that it runs out. And so there is a point when someone is entrenched in their sin and not making any effort, there may be a limit to God's patience, which we must be vigilant of. And so meeting God in his forbearance and matching it with a forbearance of our own, we continue to strive to be more and more close to Christ. We have a beautiful way of doing this here as Catholics because of the Eucharist. We touch him. We feel him. We bring him into our lives. We bring him into our heart and our souls. Today we will have time for Eucharistic adoration a time to be a people who are life-giving, life-receiving, and living the way, the truth, and the life. Regina Jenny,